Greetings, beloved. I'm Pastor Kiyomo Butler. This is Restoration Victory Ministries. Hope everyone's having a great Friday so far, man. Listen, we've had fun these last uh, two days. Uh, today would be the fourth teaching, <laughs> but it's really day two um, of this series that the Holy Spirit of God is leading us in. Just understanding how to truly grow in the favor of God. How to truly be a person that God looks at and says, now, that's a man behind my own heart. That's a friend of God. You know, for so many of us as Christians on this earth, uh, and, and I spoke about this on day one, we want the blessings. We want the favor. We want the prosperity. We want the gifts. We want the callings. We want the anointing. We want to be heirs of God and join heirs with Jesus Christ, and we want to receive that. But a lot of us really, really, really aren't willing to do or to act in the way that God would like us to act in order to receive. You know, we're all are Christians. So this is not about being a Christian. This is about, as I always say, with Restoration Victory Ministries, about living a life restored unto victory on this earth as well as in heaven. Living a life that shows that you're an heir of God and you're a joint heir with Jesus Christ on this earth as well as in heaven. Being victorious over the devil and his power and his tricks while you are alive on this earth as well as in heaven. So let's man, let us just let us bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Let us jump right into this because I am very excited about what the Holy Spirit has given me to speak to you guys about today. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, giving you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. We ask it will be all of you and none of me as we explore your word together today. We thank you and love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, beloved, listen, I want to say this. I said this in the beginning, but I want to say this again. This teaching, this series, there is not a Christian alive, whether you're a babe in Christ or a bishop, that can challenge <clears throat> what the Holy Spirit of God is saying to us. The greatest thing about the gift that God gives me is, is none of me, is, is none of my practicing or writing or trying to figure out what to say to get a certain point across for a certain reason. It's literally being led by the Holy Spirit of God to speak what God has me to say for us, for me and for you guys, his children. This is not a denominational teaching. This is not a theological teaching. This is not an ideology, ideologist or ideological teaching. <laughs> well, I love it when I make up words. This is a teaching that is really just for every Christian, every man or woman in the body of Christ, and really for every person on this earth who wants to have a certain kind of relationship with God. And today, I think the subject matter, man, is, is honestly, this subject matter should have probably, from a logical standpoint, been spoken first. But as I say, the Holy Spirit of God gave it to me to give it to you now. He didn't give it to me then. So this is the order that we're going in. But remember, first we talked about it's Jesus and Jesus Christ only. That was point one. Like to truly understand in this day and time that it's Jesus and Jesus Christ only above science, above thoughts, above great thinking, above what you think you should or shouldn't happen, above emotions, above all that is Jesus and Jesus Christ. And then we also learned point two was, listen, now that you're a Christian, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you. So you should really live and act in a way that shows that the Spirit of God is in you. Our third part that we dealt with was faith. Um, we spoke about it. I spoke about it yesterday, but that message was delivered to you guys earlier today. It was a message on faith and just having faith that God is God. And having faith that we are children of God and what God has said in his word shall come to pass. And then we should, live, we should live and walk in a way that shows that we have faith in God. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, today's message, beloved, this is the, this is the hump. This is the one that's probably this one and the last one that the Holy Spirit is going to allow me to teach. Are probably the ones that are, they're, they're my hot buttons. Listen, thought for today. Thought number four, teaching number four. Again, how, now this is not about being a Christian. This is about how as a Christian to grow in favor with God. 
This is how, as a Christian, for God to look at you and say, yeah, that's a man behind my own heart right there. That's a woman behind my own heart right there. Now, that is a friend of God. See, this is a greater level of Christian thinking and understanding. This is not about just doing enough just to get to heaven. This is about doing and living on a way in this earth that we are 100% in the will of God so that we can receive the blessings of God. Let's not forget this foundational scripture. All things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. And every good and every perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of light with whom there is no variation and no shadow of turning. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from above from the Father of lights. Remember, this series is about how to grow in favor with God so that we can receive those good and perfect gifts. So that we can live a life of abundancy in those good and perfect gifts. There's absolutely nothing that we can do. There's absolutely nothing that we can do that's more important than seeking and yearning and establishing a close personal relationship with God. A close personal relationship with Jesus Christ. See, that relationship transcends everything on this earth. It, it transcends race. It transcends denominations, ideologies, theological thoughts, um, your background, your heritage, what you've been through, what you think you have, what you think you deserve, what you think you're going to achieve. That close personal relationship with God, that close personal relationship with Jesus Christ is the foundation for every victory that you're going to have. The Bible says in the book of James, fourth chapter, it says, submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. It says, cleanse your hands, sinners. Purify your heart. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your heart. Draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. Submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. All things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. When you draw near unto God, he draws near unto you. When you're in love with God and you're working and doing things according to the will of God, all things work together for your good. Because when you're in that love relationship with God, you can hear from God. You're called by God. And remember, all things work together for the good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. So things work together for your good. You receive the blessings and the favor and the prosperity and the anointing and the gifts and the victories. When you love the Lord, when you have that love relationship with the Lord, every good and every perfect gift that comes from the Lord that comes down from above, comes from the Father of lights. And when you're in a love relationship with that Father of lights, when you're in a love relationship with God, then all things work together for your good. You are victorious. You are prosperous. You walk in favor. You win. You're above and not beneath. You're the head and not the tail. You lend. You will not have to borrow. Everything that you set your hand unto do shall prosper. But beloved, if you don't truly love God, if you're not truly seeking God, remember, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then all things will be added unto you. So if you're not in that love relationship with God, if you have not submitted yourself unto God, if you have not drawn near unto God, then how can you expect for, if you're not seeking ye first the kingdom of God, then how can you expect all things to work together for the good for you? How can you expect to receive of the good and the perfect gifts that come down from above? How can you think that all things be added unto you? It, it won't happen if you're not in that relationship with God. Because let me, let me go backwards now. This relationship with God and this love relationship with God causes you to want to learn more about God and grow in God. So it causes you to spend more time in his word. You study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth because you're so much in love with God, you just want to please him. You want to do all things according to his will. You want to get closer to him. 
So you're in the word and you're in prayer. Guess what's happening? Your faith is growing. You may not even realize it, but your faith is growing. You're becoming a powerhouse of faith because you love God. You want to please God. And because your faith is growing, the Holy Spirit and the power of God on the inside of you is growing. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. Well, the Holy Spirit of God, which leads us and guides us into all truth, teaches us all things through reading his word, through spending time with God, through being in communion with God. Because remember, you, you want this relationship with God so bad. You yearn for the relationship with God. You realize that the gifts, the blessings, the favor, the triumph, that's just a byproduct. That's just the reward. That's what you have as an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's yours because of your relationship with your father. The Bible says that the father takes pleasure in your prosperity. The Bible says that the blessings of the Lord will make you rich and he will add no sorrow to it. So when you're in this relationship, then the gifts and the prosperity and the favor and the blessings, they come. Because at, at that point, when you're in that, praise God, when you're in a love relationship with God, the gifts, the prosperity, the blessings and the favor are not what's most important. It's the love relationship with your father. It's going in faith. It's having that kind of faith that can move a mountain. It's knowing that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in you. You honor that. You yearn for that. You're thankful for that. Like you talk to the Father and you thank him so much for his Holy Spirit. And then from there, there's no way in the world, there's no way possible that anybody can come to you and say anything about anything other than Jesus Christ to you because you are so much in love with him. So that's why I said that really this should have been the first teaching. But the Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. The Holy Spirit is the great architect. God is the great architect. I'm teaching this now, praise God, so that I can go backwards and show the relevance. This love relationship with God is the foundation. This love relationship with God is what brings every good and every perfect gift. Listen to these scriptures again now. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then all things shall be added unto you. All gifts, all prosperity, all favor, all blessings. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation and no shadow of turning. When you're in a relationship with God, all the blessings and the favor come unto you from God. When you're seeking God, all things are added unto you. All things work together for the good for those who love God and are called and called to his purpose. Again, your love for God, your yearning for God makes all things work together for the good for you. The blessings are there. Because of your love relationship and your seeking and your yearning for God. And then your loving and your yearning and your seeking for God helps your faith. You spend time in his word because you want to grow in him. You want to grow in communion with him. The more time you're in the word, word the more your faith grows. The more time you're in the word, the more the Holy Spirit in the acts of your spirit. The Holy Spirit of God, which is on the inside of you, praise God. The Holy Spirit of God that is on the inside of you, praise to the spirit of God, which is in heaven on your behalf. We know not what to pray for as we ought to, but the spirit in the seas on our behalf, which murmur with the murmurings, which cannot be uttered. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the spirit is, for the spirit makes intercessions on our behalf according to the perfect will of God. The spirit of God on the inside of you communion communicates with the spirit of God in heaven on your behalf, but according to God's perfect will. Man, who doesn't want that? Like literally, why would we not want that? Like, why would we not want to invest the time and the love that it takes to grow in this relationship with God so that we can grow in our faith, so that the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of us can become unstoppable. And so that through that, we know that Jesus is it. We don't want to talk about nothing else. That particular person cannot be defeated. I'm saying this to everybody's watching. Everybody that is watching. And I'm saying this, listen, I know that a lot of times in the Christian circles, um, some of us, we watch ministers and we, we tend to watch ministers on YouTube and online. And some of us genuinely watch it just to see if that minister is saying something wrong so we can have something to say. We want to tweet about other ministers. We want to blog about other ministers. We want to comment about what they're saying that you don't agree with. All that is great. I'm not here for any of that. 
what I will tell you, if anybody can comment that this, what I'm saying is wrong, brother, God bless you. Mercy be upon your soul and your spirit. If anybody can say that establishing in any religious denomination, any sect, any race, any ideology, any thought pattern, any anything that is quote unquote, they're doing in the name of Jesus. If they can argue with me that what I'm saying is wrong, which I know is not wrong because I'm being led by the Holy Spirit of God. And which I know is not wrong because just a logical mind will say, well, that's right. If you want to get closer to God and you want to receive blessings and favor from God, or if you want to have the life of God, if you want to have kingdom on this earth, the best thing you can do is get close to God. The closer you get to God, the better off you are. If you're a Christian and that is your goal, that's not your goal. Then this conversation is not for you. But in every sect and every culture and every thought pattern on Christianity, whether you believe in heaven and hell, a literal heaven and hell, whether you believe in a spiritual heaven and hell, whether you believe heaven is going to be on this earth, whether you believe in purgatory and all the other thoughts that are out there <clears throat> within the Christian community. The one thing that is true, <clears throat> if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, literally, whether you're a Christian, a Mosaic Jew, which is a Christian Jew, Hebrew, Israelites, any anybody out there that calls themselves calling on the name of Jesus Christ. Race, creed, denomination, nationality, it doesn't matter. If you do not agree that the most important thing is having a personal love relationship with God so that you can grow in your faith, so that the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of you can become supernaturally powerful. And we know it's about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If that's not where you are, and beloved, what are you talking about and what are you teaching and what is what is your purpose? Like, what is your goal in this whole gospel of Jesus Christ thing? Like, what is it you're trying to achieve? I would like to know. My number is there. Please call me. I would genuinely like to know if you disagree with this. I'm saying this with a little passion because there are a lot of babes in Christ. There are a lot of people who are following certain type of teachings and certain type of thought patterns. And people are really being led away from the gospel of Jesus, from falling in love with Jesus, from honoring God the Father, from a relationship with God, from a love relationship with God. Because the stuff that's just leading us down air areas and lanes and paths, they're really just, they don't support the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you the last thing that we're going to deal with, this last teaching that I'm going to do is going to be on love, but it's going to be on biblical love. It's going to be on godly love. It's going to be on agape love. I can't wait that the Holy Spirit leads me to teach that. I can't wait to see what he's going to say through me. But beloved, for right now, understand. Everything that we've said so far, they add together. They, they complement each other. There's no, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. So there's nothing in the Bible that won't complement something else in the Bible. The only thing that will cause it not to complement is when we put our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, even sometimes our experiences, and we try to make our experiences, our emotions, our thoughts, our attitudes, stuff that has been taught by us through denomination and, and ideologies, and we, we try to use that to, we put the word of God around that instead of putting that around the word of God. We try to make that the foundation and then make the word make sense based upon what we're thinking, as opposed to letting the word be the foundation and letting it cause us to change our thinking. Blessings, favor, prosperity, gifts, anointing, victory, rest restoration, it all comes from a personal relationship with God. Again, every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and then all things will be added unto you. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling through your relationship with God, for it's God that worketh in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And if God works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure, beloved, you know that God works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure, for his relationship with him and you being used by him on this earth, not to do it your way. Think about that, beloved. Think about that. All things work together for the good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. <clears throat> now, beloved, listen, I, I love all people. I love everyone. I am so thankful that the Holy Spirit 
has chose to use me to deliver this message today. This message today is a message that I truly feel could and probably should be spoken in every church in the world. I think this type of message should be spoken one time and should be, this foundation should be kind of drilled in by every believer or every believer should have this understanding everywhere in the world. Because if it's not, if your personal relationship with God is not right, if your desire is not to have God look at you and say, as he did about Abraham, a friend of God, as he did about King David, that's a man behind my own heart. If your desire is not like Jesus when he was on the cross, when he asked God to take this cup away from him, and he said, no, but not my will, Father, but thy will be done. If that's not where you stand, beloved, humbly speaking, humbly speaking, I will say to you, you really need to internalize where you are in your relationship with God. Because nothing is more important than really having the father look at you and call you a friend, a man behind his own heart. Like there should be nothing more important to you on this earth than to do the will of the father, which is in heaven, who has saved and delivered you. But beloved, listen, God bless. I could talk about this all day, but I would be beating a dead horse the, the truth is, truth is, as my African brother would say, hear me now. Hear me now. Seek God. Make falling in love with Jesus the most important thing. Make having a close personal relationship with God the most important thing. So you will grow in your faith. You will grow in the Holy Spirit and the power and the anointing of God that is on the inside of you. You will have no doubt that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, to whom him be the glory and to whom name is above every name, those in heaven, those on earth, and those below the earth. God bless you. Hey, I look forward to seeing you again. I pray that you have a great Friday. <laughs> Go with Jesus. God bless, man. Amen. Bye-bye.